Okay, so now we're going to take a look at fluid mechanics. Uh, first one we're going to look at deals with buoyant force. So we've got an unknown object that we've got a little bit of information about. So I've got an object here. Could be a box. Could be anything. So it's got a volume. And the information we're given is we put it down in a liquid. And most of it goes underwater, but not all of it. Now you can remember back to some of the things that we talked about in class when we were looking at the buoyant force. Uh, we saw that if things had a density lower than water, was what we were looking at, that they would end up floating. And if they had a buoyant or a density greater than water, they would sink. But even when they sink, they still have a buoyant force on them. I took one of the brass weights and I put it down in the water and we saw that the scale would actually be a little bit less. And we went through and used our buoyant force equation to predict what the scale would say, and we saw that it actually came up to that. So, we've got an object here, and we're given a little bit of information. The volume of this object, at least with my numbers, is 0 0.44 cubic meters. That's actually pretty large. That's a little bit less than one cubic meter. To put that in perspective, Imagine one meter by one meter by one meter. That's a lot of space. Cubic meters, pretty large. And this is about half, almost 0 0.5, of one cubic meter. So this thing's actually pretty big. All right. It floats with a fraction of its volume submerged in a liquid of density 1,180 for my numbers, as shown in the figure. Okay. So information that we are given, density of our fluid... We don't know what the fluid is, and presumably it's not water because the density of water, at least at 4 degrees C, and the main number that we've been using in class is about 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. The density of this fluid is 1,180 kilogram per cubic meter. Now one of the things that I mentioned was that in class we could even go beyond and we could find out that if 0.7... 70% of this object is beneath the water, then that means that there's actually a ratio of its density to the density of the water. Well, in this case, it's not water, it's a fluid. But the ratio would actually be 0 0.7. We didn't show that in class, and if we have time, I may show that now. But right now, let's focus on actually solving the problem. The problem is asking, what's the magnitude of the buoyant force on the block? The acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Give me just a moment. Can't believe I forgot my calculator. Trusty, trusty tool. All right. They want to know what the buoyant force is. Well, if we're looking for a buoyant force, we probably want to use the equation for buoyant force, which I introduced in class. Our buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. That was kind of the description of it and the best way to remember it. But what it comes up to is rho of the fluid, the density of the fluid, times the volume displaced, and that was how much of the liquid we pushed out of the way, or fluid, I should say, sometimes it's gas, rho v, this is the mass of the fluid displaced, because if I have the density times the volume, I know how much mass there was that used to be here that's now been pushed out of the way, and to turn it into the weight, I would multiply that by the acceleration due to gravity. That would be the force of gravity, the weight, depending on how you define it, of the liquid that used to be here. We have now pushed that much out of the way, and that results in this floating. All right, so we want the buoyant force on this. Uh, all right, well, here's something useful. If we're looking for the buoyant force, we know that our fluid has a density of 1,180 kilogram per cubic meter. Uh, we are near the surface of the Earth, although they tell us that in this case, 9.8 is the value for G. Usually in class, we've used 9.81, that's totally fine. And what we really need is the volume displaced. Now they gave us a volume, which is 0 0.44 cubic meters in my case. However, that's for the whole object, not all of that volume is underwater, and therefore we have not pushed all of that volume out of the way. In fact, we have only pushed 70%, 0 0.7, of that volume out of the way. So the volume displaced 
we could write this as the volume displaced, how much of this object is underwater, and as displaced water, or fluid I should say, is equal to 0.7, 70% of the total volume of that object, because we have 70% of it beneath the liquid. All right, well, volume displaced is therefore equal to 0 0.7 times 0 0.44 cubic meters. Multiply these out. 0.7 times 0.44. I get 0 0.308 cubic meters. That's how much is beneath the liquid and how much liquid we pushed out of the way, which is the volume displaced. So now that I've got that, I can take the density of the fluid. So if I want to find the buoyant force, that's the density of the fluid, 1,180 kilogram per cubic meter. Multiply that by my volume displaced, how much liquid I pushed out of the way, or fluid, I should be more precise, 0 0.03, or I'm sorry, 0 0.308 cubic meters times 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, one of the things that I want you to take a quick look at, cubic meters, I'm divided by here, but then I multiply by cubic meters, and I end up with these two together, give me a value in kilograms, which I mentioned was the mass of the fluid that we've pushed out of the way. And when I multiply that mass by the acceleration due to gravity, that's the weight of the fluid displaced, which is why I keep using that terminology for the buoyant force. But I multiply all these together, so I'm going to take this, times 1180 times 9.8. And I get the buoyant force for my numbers comes up to 3562, 61.7, but 62, to four significant figures. You should be fine taking it only to three significant figures, which is what we usually do. But since this is a force, I put SI in, so I get SI out, I get Newtons. But beyond that, you can see the cubic meters cancel out. I have kilogram times meter per second squared, which is in fact a Newton. Now, I want to take this one step farther because the sort of thing that I might ask in addition to this more broadly, and you're going to see that this is going to come up in some other problems as well. Instead of asking what the buoyant force is on this, I would take it one step farther and I would ask you what the mass of this object is. All right. Okay, so this is one thing that we've got. We know that we've got a buoyant force holding it up, and we've got gravity pulling this thing down. So if I'm, I'm going to take this just a little bit further. And if I do my sum of forces in the y, I'm going to have the buoyant force up minus the force of gravity down, and that will be equal to my mass times my acceleration in the y. But if this object is simply floating there, then the acceleration is going to be equal to zero, and this whole term disappears. So we found the buoyant force here, which is 3,562 newtons, minus the force of gravity, which is the mass of the object, times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, equals zero, because I have no acceleration over here. Add this over to the other side. I get 3,562 newtons equals m times 9.8 meters per second squared. <coughs> I divide both sides by 9.8, so I'm going to take this, divide by 9.8. I should get something in the ballpark of 363 kilograms equals my mass. And I'm going to take this one final step, because I mentioned this before. And we're going to do a comparison here. We know that this object has a mass of 363 kilograms, which is actually really, really heavy. That's going to be something like uh, times 2.2. It's going to be about 800 pounds is what that is. So this is a, we already mentioned, it's a very large object, but it's also very heavy. Let's see if we can find its density. Well, we know its total mass is 363 kilograms, and we know its total volume is 0 0.44 cubic meters. The density of my object is 363 divided by 0.44 is 825 kilogram per cubic meter. Uh, 
I don't recognize that density right offhand. It's actually a little bit less than water. Might be something like wood. I don't know. I could bring up a table and we could double check. But here's one final thing that I mentioned and I want to show you. So if I take the density of the object that we just found, and I divide it by the density of the fluid, which we were given, well, that's going to be equal to, we found 825 kilogram per meter cubed, divided by 1,180 kilogram per meter cubed. You'll notice that since they both have the same units, all of my units cancel out, and I end up with a unitless number, a dimensionless number. And I end up with the following. 825 divided by 1180. Look at that. 0 0.699, with a few more there. That's 0 0.7, which ties back to something that I mentioned earlier, and I mentioned in class that not only can we predict if something will float, Beyond that, we can actually predict how much of it will end up under the fluid. We said that 70% of it ended up beneath the liquid. We can actually predict that if we know the densities of the two objects. We know that this is less, so not only will it float, but if I take the ratio of their densities, I can find out exactly how much of it will be under the water line. This is the sort of thing that would be used in ships to find out how far up the water would go on the boat, among other things.